Okay, we freed you from the car. Uh, I don't know, I can't tell from the little picture on the back of the camera whether you're getting to see them or not, but hopefully you are. And we're actually in a really nice location as we're parked up. Okay, we have you back in place. We will now drive round to Buxton, assuming that the traffic's not still really, really bad. If it's really bad, then we'll over to somewhere equally as interesting but not traffic filled I'm not sure what happened there we were recording and then it just wasn't started bleeping at us and turned itself off Now through to Edale at High Peak. Because it was so hot earlier in the year, it means that a lot of people didn't get out to do this sort of stuff, to go out walking and cycling because it was just too hot. And I think they've all saved it up for now because you always get a lot of walkers around here, but I've never seen quite so many on this stretch at once. At least that big thundercloud seemed to have disappeared. Quite a lot of buildings like the one on the left that was we've just gone past. Where they've just been left for ruin. That spread around the area and it makes you wonder if um, 
if they're still owned or if they're just needed too much repair so those just left and then eventually end up in complete ruin or if those abandoned or what there's quite a lot of them so and I know that most of the females around here are worked so I guess they must be owned but would you abandon that many buildings I know it's not a one person obviously but generally and if the stone buildings and the walls are still up then really the only repair is the roof But there again, I suppose if it's a building out in the middle of nowhere, then you'll be pretty limited on what you could keep in there. In case somebody else decided that it'd be better if they owned it. I know that farming is hard work but it's a nice place to work isn't it? Right, I finally got some reception on the phone. I'll be looking at the live traffic report for Buxton and it's all bright red, meaning that there's a huge amount of traffic there. So that's now somewhere that we're going to avoid. make our final choice. Okay, Matlock it is. We'll head round back through into Matlock. We're going a different route. to where we were earlier so you're not going to be seeing the same the same thing twice or anything because we did start off by 
Bakewell and Baslow, which is quite close to Matlock, but we won't be passing over the same ground. Other than Chatsworth Garden, I think we might still drive through that again, but mainly because it's quite nice. And it's nice to be able to drive through the garden of a stately home. We are now partly driving into the sun which has decided to come back out. Which may dazzle you now and again. But there's a lot more dark areas than the odd bit of sunshine that we've been seeing, so I'm not going to put the lens on for you. Which is pretty much like putting a pair of sunglasses on for you. Which if you've ever worn sunglasses going through uh, into light bright sunny areas and then through into the dark trees, it doesn't always work out too well. And cameras struggle with that sort of thing anyway. We are in September and it is ten past five in the afternoon so it's it's still a couple of hours before it would normally actually get dark but because it has been such a cloudy miserable looking day it's it's gonna get dark a bit earlier tonight. And that's where you're gonna to start to lose the quality of the image that you're now seeing. And I want you to have a perfect, perfect picture, so we'll try and make sure we're heading to where the brighter sky is. And I've got back into a nice interesting area before we end up running out of daylight. They were going to say that, but this is a pretty nice area itself. Imagine one of these being your house. Except mine is the walkers and tourism. Like a fun house mirror. Now Matlock was horrendous when we came through it earlier. We weren't filming at the time, but we came through it on the way to where we first started filming. And I told you about it earlier saying that it one half had been cut off. But that was now a few hours ago, about three or four hours ago. Two or three hours ago, something like that. So I'm really, really hoping that the traffic's now gone. Apparently the traffic hasn't gone. <laughs> this is all heading in that direction. The church clock says that it's about eight minutes past five. So that means that someone's clock's out and I'm hoping it's theirs. Yeah, 
yeah, their clock's a few minutes slow. Your view just changed, didn't it? The clamp that we're using to um, keep the camera propped up is working fine, it, but the links in between are really not doing any good today. Normally they're absolutely solid, but I think because we've been getting the big temperature drops and stuff, I think the plastic's contracted or something, so it's allowing the joints to move around a bit more. and in doing so moving your picture about been some quite weird cloud formations about and I'm wondering if it's um, related to any of the cloud seeding that all of our governments seem to have been doing lately because the whole of Europe was in drought and most of the US was in drought and all of China was in drought China first started it by Saying it's alright, we'll start cloud seeding and then we'll make it rain. And I wouldn't be surprised if, since the weather changed quite rapidly across the globe, if other countries decided, actually, yeah, let's do that as well. Either that or what China put down blew across and blew around the, around the earth to us. I know that, obviously, in England, in the UK, and a lot of the weather systems do go from China around through to the US, across the US, off the right hand side of the US, across the Atlantic and through to us. That's where most of our weather systems come from. I don't know how long it takes for wind from China to reach the UK. There's been quite a few weird formations popping up in the media and stuff lately as well. So it's not just what we've been seeing as we're going around filming, it's this is countrywide.
really hate traffic lights. Especially ones that take too long. So I'm just taking a tractor out for a bit of a spin. Another little one. I know that you've been wiggling around a little bit with your view, but I think it's settled down a bit more now. purposely made it so that the bonnets in your view a little bit because it helps the camera have something a bit better to focus on so as we are going through the light and dark it should hopefully uh, keep your, your picture a bit better
half the problem is the fact that the roads are so bumpy around here. <laughs> so even though the camera might not be picking it up because of the stabilisation and stuff, it and we are being shaken to bits. music Some places like this where you'll benefit by us having the camera pointing a little bit at the bonnet. So I know it's nice having a cleaner view without any car in the scene at all, but all that bumpy bit. Let's check that you can still see something. Well, you seem okay. And on that note, well, I hope that was as good for you as it was for us. Everything just collapsed. <laughs> the um, the problem has been cured, though. It turns out that one of the sections of I don't know what they're called these things 
one of them fell apart. They've got like a, um, like a ball and knuckle joints to them. There they go. And they're um, great normally, except one probably isn't an original one. Might be a, a replacement from Amazon or something. Because it's a little bit shinier than it should be. But also the, the joints just aren't, aren't as strong. One of the joints is completely coming apart. We might have bought something from Amazon or something like that and it came along with it and it's just been mixed in with the normal stuff. But that's why the picture and the camera and everything else has been playing up for the past, well all day really, because it's been rattling. I think it's literally the joints on that have been rattling because we couldn't find anything yeah, like dingling about or anything. Yeah, so hopefully all the problems are fixed. You did collapse. We'll probably cut some of it out so that you don't end up feeling dizzy watching it. But um, the camera tumbled down and then spun around until it landed on the floor in the car. With all the mechanism we've got holding it up, tumbling down on top of it. It might be able to be readjusted just a little bit. So trouble you buy you buy stuff from Amazon and you end up getting other bits that you wouldn't really intend to use because you know that they're probably going to be more problem than they're worth. But a lot of the time they look pretty much identical to the the proper product. So as it is, this one is a little bit more shiny, but we didn't really notice it in the brighter light earlier. All of the joints from that that we use are all GoPro ones. Doesn't matter what camera we've got on top, we still use those those clamps. I've got the big bulldog clip on the bottom, the larger version, the gorilla one or whatever it's called. But the twisty bits in between it, they really should never be, they shouldn't be weak enough to come apart. The GoPro ones are usually pretty good.
don't see many weeping willow trees. That big one in front. I think they only tend to be around damper areas like by canals. Cavendish Hotel. Cavendish, isn't that something from off television? Was that Cavender? Like always for these drives, we've got two sat navs running, one with Google Maps and then a normal TomTom -tom type sat nav. But for most of the time, throughout this entire drive, they've both been given different directions to the same places. Actually thinking about it, since we're over this direction, we should have gone through Snakes Pass. But I don't think that we do on this route. But if I remember, that's a really nice driving section as well. There are more and more cars with the headlights on now. It's still a nice blue sky though. Well, kind of.
Well, you can tell the winter's definitely on its way because now it's dropped down to about 16 degrees. From 23 down to 16, that's quite a drop. It dropped down earlier for quite a while when we was near that storm, but then it did go back up to about 20, 22. I think that he wanted us to turn off back there. So rather than divert round, I'm going to do exactly that. Unless... Oh, we can take another road. Because what I didn't want to do is go down onto the main road. As in the dual carriageway. Pretty sure we're heading towards Sheffield Dokeson at the moment. So if we kept on going, we'd get to the proper dual carriageway. One downside to putting the cameras where we do makes it a bit difficult to use the screen wash for the windows. I think you might get some water in your face if we did that. Ah, oh, there we go, I managed to cut back onto the road that we were originally supposed to be on. the neatly ploughed fields. Some of these bumps shake the entire car, let alone us. Enjoying the sun. Off to our left, which you, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see. I know it's a wide lens, but to the left is Sheffield. And we are pretty much overlooking it completely. We don't want to go that way, but I'm going to purposely point that way a little bit so that you get to see. That's Sheffield. There's 
The only trouble is now we've got to work out a way to turn around. Lots of alarms. Now we're both going to get dazzled. And there's a miscellaneous Red Bull can that's rolling around in the footwell, in one of the footwells somewhere, from where we had to slam the brakes on when the car pulled out on us earlier. We're not sure whose seat it's under or whereabouts it is, but it does keep tinging and clanking. And when we went around there just to heard it again. Right, this is where we're supposed to be going. The bit that you won't get because the GoPro flattens out the picture so much is just how hilly a lot of these places are and how steep uphill and downhill we've been going like a roller coaster but I know that for your image it it does flatten it out quite a lot I think it might be a really nice sunset today blame him standing there to have, him have a break because it's um, a nice view off to the right across the, the fields and stuff and the trouble is that you've got this wall all the way down and there's not really other than where he was there's not been any gaps to be able to stop and kind of peer over the edge but you can just about see in the distance all the hills if we had have carried on further through towards Buxton and then carried off towards Manchester you end up with a similar sort of view to this you end up right up above Manchester overlooking the whole area as you go around on the left side of Hope Valley towards Chapel in Frith or whatever it's called That's a drive for a different day. that they've got a horse in their garden so I'll go slow because we saw it on the way just so standing out in the back garden and there's a horse just behind them
the air inside these trees here is really really cold and damp and wintry difference between being out in the sunshine to in the depths of the trees like different countries but that's better the warmth of the sun again I thought I did say that we was going to go back through Chatsworth Garden that's Chatsworth House but well this is a nicer route or at least a different route I don't know is if uh, Matlock's still going to be really really busy we had enough reception on the Google Maps earlier to be able to pick up about Bath I mean um, Buxton Bath that would be quite a drive about Buxton and we could see that it was really busy there still but We've not really had reception since. Steve Hill
are in Matlock but now we are off to just the side of the high street which is good for us because it means that we don't have to go through all the um, endless traffic from the roadworks that they're doing see a nice castle up on the top of the hill there okay we'll end this recording here I hope that you that you've enjoyed it I might have put this into two halves I'm not sure depends how big each upload is because we're using four and 8k cameras and stuff that means that there's a lot of a lot of data just to make them a bit more manageable we might split it into two if it has been hopefully you've watched both halves if not I hope that you've enjoyed the video either way and we'll see you next time